It was decided that January 1, 1993, that the MSPCA would no longer have a shelter in the Berkshires. But we were looking at it as a new opportunity, a way to, to help actually even more animals in the Berkshires by gathering more support, keeping our dollars local, and helping our local animals. We opened the door January 1st, 1993. To me, one of the most important things was to be an open admission shelter. For the last 25 years, Berkshire Humane Society has sheltered over 50,000 animals. Our shelter is open admission, which means we will accept an animal that walks through our door. Probably the number one reason a cat is surrendered to the Berkshire Humane Society is because their feet were found outside. They're considered a stray for whatever reason or another. So a good chunk of our kitties just come to us because they need somewhere to go. Paradise is a feline adoption facility. It's a satellite office from our main shelter. Since we've opened that building, we have adopted over a thousand additional cats. By branching out and being able to target more members of the community, we're making a greater impact on the lives of the animals in the community, as well as their health and the people's understanding of what these animals need from them. Humane education is part of our mission statement. It is hugely important. Responsible pet ownership is one of the basic tenets of most humane education programs. Humane Heroes is probably, to me, the flagship of what we should be doing today. What we've done in, in regards to humane education has is, is really been the foundation for the change in our community. The first program that I was in was the Camp Humane that they have here. I fell in love with it the first time that I was there. I first met Kaylee in her last year of Camp Humane through being a junior counselor and being kind of my teaching assistant this past year. She has become empowered to basically do the right thing. That's a really rare, wonderful thing to have as an educator to see that happen. I just started volunteering here for the small animal room. I clean and I maintain the health of all of the animals like the guinea pigs, the bunnies. It makes me feel good to be able to help them and get them the help that they need and feed them and just give them the life that people don't really think happens in a shelter. If it wasn't for the volunteers, we wouldn't be able to do half of what we do at the shelter. They help us clean, they help us dog walk, they do our vet runs. We can't do it without them. It's just so rewarding. You can tell by the big smile on my face that, you know, I just, I love being out here. Part of our job is to make sure that we put animals in the home that are acceptable. When a person comes in, we want to match them up to what they're looking for. All of our dogs, what we say is get color coded. They basically get a color of purple, orange, or green. Purple is kind of your more lower key type dogs. Orange is kind of your middle of the road dogs where they probably want to go for that mile or two walk. And I like to just describe green as your border collie type dogs where they're just on the go all the time. We use the system just because it really helps place the best dogs in the right homes. But we really want to make sure it is a forever home and it's the right home and people are happy with their animal that they do take home. I'm going to go home and introduce her to her new life and probably my, my new life with her. So. There's really any reason for a potential animal to come to us. I mean, definitely we see more of moving. Sometimes we see mostly the adolescent dogs coming in at, you know, 10 months, 11 months of age. They got them as a puppy around Christmas time, and now, you know, they're way too much for the family. Or once again, just people not having enough time and not knowing what they got into when getting a puppy. Our job is to educate people, to keep the dogs in their homes, so behavior is part of our everyday job. The education, including the Family Dog School program, I think is really important. The information that's out there now is new, cutting edge, and science-based, and we really want to spread the word so that people understand more about their dogs and are more humane to them.
I can take in a 10-year-old dog, a 12-year-old dog, so that old adage of you can't teach an old dog new tricks is totally untrue. A lot of people think dog classes, us teaching the dog, really were there to instruct the owner. We want to see that owner build the skill set that they can train their own dog. Yes, nice yes, boy. Oh my goodness, good boy! I know we've talked about our challenges, and one of our biggest challenges is to let the community know this Berkshire Maine site is much more than a place where people can come to surrender their pet, where people can come to adopt. We have so many more programs that are out there to help people and their animals. The Safe Pet Program provides temporary foster care for the pets of uh, Berkshire County residents who are in, we call it crisis or transition. We believe that it's important to not only take care of animals, but to take care of the people who love them. And this program does both of that. So I, I think that's one of the biggest successes is seeing people come home and bringing a dog or a cat back to them. And um, that's really what they need for their recovery and you know, to get their back, life back on track. I entered the field in late 1983-84, and I could tell you back then, it was very common for us to see seven, eight, nine, ten litters of kittens or puppies in a day. And I knew that in order to help start controlling the pedophile population, not only did we have to come up with some early spay-neuter programs to help the community, but we also wanted to make sure that we took care of our own and made sure all of our placements were being spayed and neutered. I'm not from the Berkshires. My, I've never heard of the Berkshires before I bought this practice. But my wife and I were looking to be part of a community. And so subsequently, that's why part of the reason I'm involved with Berkshire Humane. They have a great balance of making good decisions on how to benefit as many animals as possible. They also get the fact that it's collaborative. John and his staff have made a point at reaching out to every veterinary hospital in the community, encouraging them to support them, providing spay and neuter procedures for them, seeing sick animals. That collaborative effort, not just from us, from Pittsfield Vet, but from the whole veterinary community, is why Berkshire Humane can be successful. My favorite part of my job, I would have to say, is coming to work every day and every day being different. And I mean, obviously the end goal is to have the animals walk out the door and stay the rest of their lives. I mean, I have to say, as a person that's been here for 25 years, I'm actually on my second adoptions for some of these families, that they actually have come in and they're like, you've given my dog 10 years ago. So it's kind of nice to see that I am actually helping them find their second and third generations of their pets, which I don't think a lot of people can say that. I'm proud of the community involvement, the compassion and love of our staff. We are truly a community resource and we have real community involvement. And hopefully we'll always have this community to depend upon. And, and without the involvement and generosity of this community, we couldn't have done this. Because of the compassion of our community and the commitment of the staff and the volunteers, I know moving forward that anything is possible.